Hi, this is Robert Redfern and welcome to our Thursday get-together. I've got some good news out of Italy. Um, follows on from last week's, but uh, it's just more information. Uh, I've got some really exciting news. Um, I don't know whether you've heard of Tony Robbins, but uh, he's somebody I followed many years ago when I was first trying to put my life in order. Uh, he's possibly the world's most famous motivational speaker, and um, but he's suddenly woken up to the truth of our plight, and he's now putting his great wealth and, uh, and power behind making high quality videos, and he's featuring Nobel Prize scientists and doctors to help them expose the pharma crimes. And, and so this could be really good. He's got millions of followers and um, he's also um, you know, connected with, with many people in power. Uh, so if he can't make changes, I don't know who can. He's, he's, he might not be um, as uh, uh, academic as a Nobel Prize scientist, but he's certainly got more power in the, in the world of PR. So um, I have a couple of links of the two videos on my email newsletter. Uh, which you can just click on, and I'll I'll put it. I'll post the link on the um, Facebook here uh, after I finish the video. Uh, please share those links. It's the more we can share it, especially now with Tony Robbins, because people will have heard of him. It might be people that um, uh, actually believed in pharma um, that are going to be swayed, if you like, persuaded by Tony Robbins, and who knows. It could be could be fantastic anyway. Um, I think he's more powerful than Fauci and Gates. I mean, more people in the world will have heard of um, uh, Tony Robbins than even Bill Gates. You might think that is impossible, but no, he's so powerful around the world. You can Google him later and find out just how uh, who he is if you've not heard of him. If you've heard of him, then you know I'm speaking to the converted. But in the meantime, um, I can just carry on dreaming of the day when our children can go to school. Uh, you know, I've got eight grandchildren, as you know, and play with their friends and be normal children. And their parents can go about their daily life and business. And um, they can plan trips to the park and visit friends and relatives, maybe take a holiday. You know, this is the crazy world we live in, but they're all being... Uh, terrorised by the pharma medical cartel and it has to stop. The thing is, we've had five months of campaigns of lies by the pharma medical cartel and it's, you know, I used to just call them a criminal organisation and because they are criminals and they uh, pay billions in fines for their crimes, but they're happy to pay that. But I think now that they could possibly be the most terrible terrorist organization of all time and I don't care who you're going to mention I put these on the on the on the the Nazis the the, the Hitler Nazis the, they must be responsible by now for the deaths of more people than the Nazis killed and if if it's not yet it will be soon if they get their way if they can com complete uh, sorry carry on locking down people people will die people not just of uh, the conditions and the bad treatment they're giving them with their drugs. I'm talking about people will just give up life. Because when you're out of job, you, your business has been destroyed, your job's been destroyed, possibly your family. There's a lot of, a lot of people not, not strong. And um, I hope I can give you a little bit of my strength because one thing I do have is strength. I might not be the cleverest guy on the block. I might not have the qualifications of all these people, but I, I know what's right and wrong in this world and I know um, what we need to be doing. And so that's, that's what I'm about. Um, they, they've committed nine crimes of, um, against humanity. And I'm going to go through them. I, I, I'm going to, a lot of talking today. And so I'm going to read it off the screen here. They've been lying about disease um, and this disease just happens, this is a coronavirus, and just happens to have patents held on it by two organisations at the centre of all these lies. And you know who they are, Fauci and uh, Bill Gates. They're not, they don't actually have it in their name, they have it in, 
in, in organisations that they're part of. And they stand to make hundreds of millions of profit. Bill Gates was on the radio this morning, or the BBC radio, saying, no, that's all just fallacy. He's a liar. He's an out-and-out -out liar. Why would a person hold a patent if they didn't intend to make money on it? They would give the patent to some charity or whatever. Um, I mean, well, the, the charity they say is a charity is the... World Health Organization, but we know that's not a charity. <clears throat> that's part of the problem. So, you know, the lies is, is the crimes against humanity. The second, number two, is putting millions of people out of work, losing their jobs, no pay. Yes, I know that some people in America have been given some pay and some people in the UK, but around the world, that's not going to happen. You know, we have five billion people on this planet and maybe a few hundred thousand have been paid while this lockdown's happened. The rest are just going to starve, die and and commit suicide, possibly. They've been destroying millions of businesses. People have built these businesses over their life and maybe they wanted to give it to their children, pass it on or something. Or they just, just love their business. They love helping people doing what they do, producing something. It could be art, it could be um, manufacturing something, it could be a farmer, it could be anything but they just destroyed these businesses. Um, number four is they lie about the correct treatments. They just lie. It's out and out lie. If anybody tries to say, oh, uh, you know, vitamin C is good or, or uh, um, e even the, um, the uh, malaria drug, they just say that's, that's no good. It doesn't work. It does work. People have been using it around the world. Oxford University were just a few days ago were saying, yes, we're getting great results. And all of a sudden, no, they're not getting great results. Do you think somebody's put pressure on Oxford University to stop saying they're getting great results with the anti-malaria drug? I think so. Um, number five is um, they're lying so that people are under house arrest. Because people are, they're just being told. In the UK, I'm don't know if it's the same in the USA, but it's the same in Australia. People get fined if they go out without good reason. If they walk out of their house without good reason, they get fined. And this, that's house arrest by another name. How dare they do that to, to literally millions and millions of people, billions of people. Number six. They've built an organisation around the world deliberately to do what they're doing. They've incorporated the corporate media with it and they must have people in there. They've got the government's advisors in their, in their group. They've got the heads of all the medical authorities in practically every country in the world. Not all of them. I mean, Sweden, we know Sweden hasn't done all this. So they haven't had a lockdown and they're doing just fine. That's crazy. If Sweden can do just fine by not having a lockdown, not going crazy, just getting people to look after themselves, look after their health. I don't know whether they're giving any nutrients out, so, you know, because if they are, we wouldn't know about it because, of course, the, um, uh, the pharmaceutical mafia will not allow this in the media. And you know what's happening now because videos are getting blocked in the media. I, I, I'll be very surprised if... Um, Tony Robbins gets his blocked, um, even though, you know, is is um, is uh, going against the pharmaceutical um, mafia at this point. Um, number eight, they put the lives of people at risk, and they do that by just simply lying that vitamin C and vitamin A and D three and zinc and magnesium are not critical nutrients, and you must take them every day. I mean, the science is so strong on these things. There is no scientific evidence anywhere that they're not. There is huge numbers of scientific studies to show that they are critical, and especially D3 and zinc. I mean, the, it's zinc with the anti-malaria drug that makes it so successful. On its own, yes, that's when they, they do studies saying, yes, it, no, it doesn't work, the anti-malaria drug. <clears throat> But they never put the zinc with it. And it's a zinc, which is a super for the immune system. And so, you know, they just lie through their teeth and they get the media to lie and they get the government people to lie.
because only by telling lies can they can they carry on with this conspiracy. It's mother conspiracy. It's a, it's, a, it's an attack on us all. Um, number nine. Lastly, um, the worst thing is they actually are destroying doctors' careers. You've got doctors and researchers and professors. As soon as they come out and say, "No, this is all wrong, folks. Don't listen to them," they destroy them. They just block, get them blocked. They lose funding. They just get sacked out of their jobs. That you know, they're so nasty. It's just beyond. Um, as I say, these these are the real terrorists of the world, um, and especially with the deaths. The, this is this is how it's all starting to fall apart now because they have been truth blocking. The medical pharma cartel have been actively discur discouraging autopsies and post mortems all over the world. Because if they did that, of course, if you had post mortems, autopsies, then you could see the real cause of death. But they don't want people to know that. In fact, the World Health Organization created a false code. Actually, not right at the start. They, they, they had a, a genuine code uh, to begin with, um, but of course, because doctors were saying no, they don't, they didn't die from um, coronavirus. So now, then they created a second code um, and said you must always give this if you suspect um, coronavirus or symptoms of coronavirus in that person. And this code was U07.2. Now, what happens next is that the World Health Organization and the pharma uh, cartel started persuading doctors or the doctor's um, superiors to deceive and lie about the cause of death and saying it's always dying with uh, coronavirus. Didn't say to be fair, they didn't lie on this. They didn't say dying of coronavirus. They said dying with coronavirus. But the media just picked this up and they say there's 30,000 deaths in Britain um, dying with coronavirus. And the public are just listening to it because it just sounds like they're saying dying of coronavirus, but they're not saying that. But the truth is there are some countries reporting really low deaths. I mean, Australia's one, they had a terrible lockdown and they were really strict about it, but they only had um, 150 deaths over the whole country of Australia that could be definitely put down to coronavirus, which is nothing. People, more people die from the flu in the flu season because that's what we've got at the moment because nobody's, nobody's reporting on the number of flu deaths. And that, the reason why, because that would expose what was happening, because if normally there's, say, 50,000 50, people um, die of uh, flu in the flu season. And if they if they're saying now there's 50,000 people dying of coronavirus um, and, and they said, but there's nobody dying of flu, we'd all go, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, you've just switched the, the, the name of the disease. Well, that's what they've been doing anyway. So they, um, it's fake. The figures are fake. There's a few countries where it's not fake, like Australia and Sweden, and they have really low deaths from coronavirus. But it's flu really anyway. That's the whole thing. Or it could be flu. We're not sure. And, and the Italian results, which I'm going to talk about now. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is... OK. What happened is the Italians went against the World Health Organization um, instructions because the World Health Organization said they do not want autopsies and postmortems. Uh, we say postmortem in the UK. In, in the USA, it's uh, autopsies and I don't know what it is in the rest of the world. But the, the, you, you, you get what I'm talking about. And they don't didn't want that because it meant that people would uh, start to uh, find out that people were not dying from coronavirus. Anyway, the Italian uh, health service, actually, the, not, not just some uh, rogue doctor, but the, the actual health service did autopsies on 50 people um, uh, that had died. And they discovered that uh, coronavirus 
is not a virus they think it's a bacteria and and what this bacteria do does it it causes massive inflammation in the bloodstream which clots the blood reduces the oxygen saturation in the body and makes you seriously ill because oxygen is the prime source of life it's the prime source of health and life you can't live minutes without oxygen so you start to reduce it rapidly and you're in trouble you know you can die from a lack of oxygen uh, getting to your organs um, and of course uh, any infection around then will actually build very rapidly because oxygen is your first line of defense against the um, any infection in your body you but it uses oxygen to convert it to uh, white blood cells. Uh, sorry, the white blood cells convert it to uh, hydrogen peroxide and, and that gobbles up the infection. So you've got to have oxygen. So um, the, the Italians discovered that it clots the blood and reduces the oxygen saturation around the body. Um, and this went against the World Health, Health Organization's advice. But they did find that it was um, on the the, the post-mortem, the autopsy, that all the veins had clotted and um, uh, restricted blood flow and oxygen. Uh, the people that were still alive, they immediately started using aspirin. Aspirin, you know, <laughs> the famous um, thin, thin in the blood aspirin and a, an anticoagulant drug. And they just had immediate success. And they, you know, literally... Uh, once he started doing that, 14,000 people, one after the other, uh, were, was, were recovered. And in fact, that was the start of the, the huge reduction in deaths in, uh, in Italy. It's now, Italian politicians are now demanding that Bill Gates and the World Health Organization are held accountable for crimes against humanity for misleading, misdirecting or withholding life-saving information. Um, and it costs the lives of thousands to begin with in, in um, uh, Italy. <clears throat> they also found that the, the ventilators and ICU units were just not necessary. All this, you know, huge hospital uh, thing, because I do know this actually, The uh, there was they spent millions on you know extra hospital units in exhibition centers and all sorts and everybody was stood around there was very few people being treated um and so you know they spent millions for all this and it was all ordered by the world health organization and the pharma medical cartel because even the people that make the ventilators are all part of the cartel in other words they all make their money from disease they don't make their money from health you can make your money from disease care or health care. But um, and, and even though the Italians were really um, uh, using what I would call drugs, <laughs> those drugs were working and what the heck, you know. So <clears throat> this study was headed by uh, somebody, it's, it's in my newsletter, Carly J. Uh, well, I'll say Gardipi, uh, or, or, or I think in Italy they may say Hardipi. Um, anyway, and um, and the autopsies, he says the autopsies prove that um, CV coronavirus is a disseminated intravascular coagulation, or you probably heard of it as pulmonary thrombosis, um, and and where the blood clots and it makes the lungs become dysfunctional, and um, this is from from their uh, report. Uh, the autopsies performed by the Italian pathologists have shown that it's not pneumonia, uh, but it's disseminated intravascular coagulation, which ought to be fought with antibiotics, antiviral, anti-inflammatories and anticoagulants. I mean, you don't really need the antivirals as well, I don't think, but, you know, you might as well throw all the drugs at it that will help um, to get the blood flowing and get the oxygen flowing. But in this case, it's the same for all cases. The whole world could resolve it. It could all be over if they adopted the Italian uh, methods now for it. Yeah, in all your hospitals, people could all be cleared out of there, even at risk people, which I'm going to talk about uh, at the end. So it's 
Um, thanks to just only 50 autopsies. They could carry on doing more. There's no point when they did the, the autopsies. They found the cause. They started treating people with these um, anticoagulants and, and um, aspirin and people got better. So they, they had no real point in carrying on doing more autopsies. Anybody else can do their autopsies if they want. They can do it in America. I know some individual doctors have done it in America and then they get stifled, they get blocked off um, Facebook and, and all the rest of it. So, um, in disseminated intravascular, you can read all this actually, but in, in disseminated intravascular coagulation, the lung is the most affected because it's the most inflamed. But it can actually lead to a heart attack, stroke and other thrombiotic diseases because of course oxygen is this is the prime source of health and life cut off oxygen and and you're dead in a, a relatively sh short space of time actually <clears throat> um it just goes on here actually um but they did 50 autopsies in italy in bergamo the chinese did only three and nobody else has even reported any autopsies. So that shows you how big the conspiracy is to, to block any truth in what's going on. It's massive. It's just huge. I, I just takes my breath away because it's, it's just, you know, just a year ago. I mean, I, I, you know, I've been writing about the criminal um, pharma medical cartel for, for, for years. But that's just because they are determined to give you disease care, not give you health care. Um, but never to actually really kill you, to terrorise the world so they could take over the whole world of, of uh, disease care, get it you know, away from everything else. In fact, enslave people with their drugs because that's what they're doing. You are being enslaved. You'll be a slave to their drugs. Um, they're trying to bring out law. They're trying to have apps that um, uh, you have to have on your phone. You have to have your phone with you legally. And if you don't have it with you, then and you get stopped by a policeman, you'll be fined or a police person. And um, and you've always got to have it. And it's got to show that you've had your drugs and all the rest of it. That you will be enslaved. <laughs> Make no mistake. It's not. It's not a, a you know a, a, a game they're playing. They're serious. Um, where are we there? Yeah, it's just just finishes off um, the the therapy being used in Italy is with anti-inflammatories and antibiotics, as with influenza, um, and the number of um, hospital hospitalised patients has been much reduced. Um, uh, They're saying that um, other evidence is that patients with rheumatoid arthritis have very rarely ever been admitted to an ICU because they were already on anti-inflammatories. They were on uh, steroids because that's one of the treatments of choice for, not my treatment of choice for people with um, rheumatoid arthritis, but it's the choice uh, treatment of choice with a lot of uh, doctors. And of course, because they were already taken anti-inflammatory, they, they may have had a bit of a problem, but nothing compared to the people that were not on anti-inflammatories. So um, since normally we say people on drugs are at risk, people with you know diseases like that are at risk, but because they were already on the anti-inflammatory, they didn't have a problem. And the people at risk, um, people with diabetes, um, why diabetes? Well, because they have a sugar problem and sugar deactivates the immune system. And so that whenever you do get an infection, if it is, um, uh, as they say, then you're more likely to get if you've got a deactivated immune system. So that's why diabetes uh, is a problem, because it's a sugar problem. You've got a you've got too much sugar in your body. You, you shouldn't even be having sugar, but um, you, um, you know, it, 
it also deactivates the immune system. Exactly how it does it, I don't know. But anybody with high sugar in their body is always more subject to an infection than somebody that's not. You cut your leg or something like that, it won't heal. Your immune system cannot heal um, the, uh, you know, it's a common thing. People, people with diabetes have to have their feet cut off quite often uh, to their knees. So that's, that's uh, an at-risk person. People with high blood pressure, uh, sorry, high blood sugar levels, and it could be just, uh, you, they might not be measured as high in diabetes, but they have lots of um, sugar in their body, uh, hyperglyce, hyperglycemic. Uh, black, Asian and minority ethnic people, they're at risk, and they're at risk for two reasons. Number one is that they don't have the vitamin D3. They don't absorb vitamin D3 the same as a Caucasian. And so they have to take um, extra D3 all the time, even in the summertime. And it's quite important. But also, um, they're more prone to high blood sugar. They, um, if you like, respond worse to even a small amount of carbs and sugar compared to in a Caucasian. And so there's two things, D3 and stopping carbs and sugar for black, Asian and uh, other minority ethnic people. Another group are people that are already on drugs. Now, I just said before about the, um, uh, uh, the drugs, but statins, uh, but especially chemotherapy and immunosuppressants because immunosuppressants do what it says on the tin. They actually suppress your immune system. And so that, that you're really, really at risk. You have to be on um, lots of extra nutrition, D3, vitamin C, and keeping away from sugar and carbs if you're um, on a, an immunosuppressant. But any drugs really, because all drugs have side effects. It's almost impossible. Um, people with high blood pressure, um, not quite sure, and I can't really explain that in the same way. Although I I know it, you know, stopping sugar and carbs is part of my plan in the book, in my book for high blood pressure. So it's it's probably linked, but I'm not quite. I can't put my finger on it and say for sure. Obviously, people with heart and cardiovascular diseases, um, because you know they they're at great risk because the slightest reduction in, in uh, oxygen and they will be in a mess. People with lung disease, um, again, that's, well, sugar and carbs is, uh, I, ha I have people that couldn't afford to buy any supplements from me um, in villages around the world. And they say, how can I get rid of my lung disease? I can't afford those things that you, I say, well, this is how it works. If you will follow exactly the diet that I tell you, no carbs and sugar, and do this and do that, and so sodium bicarbonate in your drinking water, um, and and inhale it uh, if you can as well, um, and they get better. So <laughs> you know it's not always critical that you have supplements, <clears throat> but you know obviously it makes it easy for you to recover. But um, you know the diet is a critical thing: carbs and sugar. People with kidney, liver, and other organ diseases. Again, it's all part of the same problem. And people over 65, I'm 74, <laughs> uh, but people over 65 who are not already following my good health plans, and I don't care how old you are, if you are 100, if you are following a really healthy diet, then you, don't, you won't have disease. It's nothing to do with age. It's to do with the fact that um, you've, just been living longer than anybody else, eating foods which are not fit for purpose for more than anybody else, not taking supplements like D3 and, and vitamin C and all the rest of it. You, you know, th these are the things, critical things. I know some people live, eat junk food, smoke, and, and they're still alive at 102. I do know that, but <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, some people don't have life insurance on the, uh, sorry, fire insurance on their house. And the house never burns down, but I'm not going to do that. You know, I've got uh, uh, fire insurance for the house, and I have got life. In I've got health insurance for me. It's called <laughs> that's on the shelf there. So, um, to be clear, other than those who have had an organ transplant, uh, which is quite a rare 
uh, thing or a, a rare disease I've not mentioned, um, everybody else can follow a really healthy plan, nutrients, stopping the carbs and getting off the drugs eventually, the uh, the pharmaceutical drugs. You know, I want to put them out of business, but I, I know <laughs> at least that's my goal anyway. I can't really um, change the world that much, but I change hundreds of thousands of people. I can promise you faithfully. I've just had um, two university students who are out of college at the moment because um, the, of the lockdown and they've been telephoning all my um, customers that have been buying the Maxi Focus since Christmas just to give them something to do actually and um, and they're just thrilled the sort of feedback they're getting from people um, with uh, recovery of the eyesight so I know my plans work but you've got to do the follow the plan and you know it's all in my ebooks anyway I keep telling you that you know download them they're at, um, at naturalhealthynews.com read them follow them don't try to say well i'll do that one thing because you know I, I you know if it was a diet then i would say do one thing <laughs> um, but if you can do a few things and the diet and the water and the walking and the things like that then then i know that we can get you better you don't have to do the whole plan with with all six nutrients whatever we say um it's better I take that lot. You think I don't? I promise you. I, I put because people are saying, "What do you take?" And I, I put them all up there. Um, it's not a joke, I, you know. I don't. I don't take them just for you know. I, I I take them because I believe in them, and that's why I formulated them. But the the best anticoagulant supplements of mine, of course, on the market as Blockbuster. Serra Enzyme 250,000 and Serenol. I don't take the Blockbuster because I really have healthy blood, but I take the Serra Enzyme every day. And some day, I never take less than a million IUs. And, and sometimes I take two million IUs. I also take three Serenol as well because Serenol is, is another powerful anti-inflammatory, but it's just a, um, it's got d a big dose of D3 as well, you know, for, for obviously immune support there but it's also got um, a couple of other things in as well so that's it for today i'll put this link to um, uh, tony robbins uh, book uh, videos on um, natural healthy news go and have a look at those and uh, uh, just see what happens if you happen to have about 500 million dollars in the bank <laughs> you know the sort of videos you can make it's just one day no <laughs> you know yeah, I've told you before, I don't, you know, people don't quite believe it, but, it, you know, we're actually a not-for-profit <laughs> organisation. And if I ever make enough money, the first thing I'll do is open recovery centres where people can go for one month or two months and relearn their life. So you don't have to sit at home trying to um, remember what food to take, whatever. You know, you, literally you can uh, go to, if you like, a college um, of recovery and, and I, I will open it one day so if there's any 500 million dollar millionaires out there listening to me you know you know where you can um, put your money okay take care I shall be here next week um, again take care bye